Welcome everyone. Welcome back to the Learning Planet Center. Um, I'm Louise, I'm a M1 student, and I'm delighted to have you for this event. More here. Okay. For this event, uh, In the Mood for Poetic Futures, um, which is part of the Learning Planet Festival. And I'm really like, we are grateful to have this dedicated time and space to talk about the role of poetry for imagining poetic futures. And as you know, poetry engages us in like experiencing vulnerability, experiencing strength, experiencing defiance and resilience. And um, it's gonna be amazing to talk with you about how it's going to engage us in uh, talking about our futures and how uh, we think about them. So I would like to thank the audience on site for being there, but I also would like to thank the audience online. Um, it's a hybrid event. We unfortunately had some technical issues, so some of the some of the material you will be uh, able to find it on the Learning Planet Institute website after the event. Um, we're going to start with an introduction performance uh, from the poets in different languages. And then we will have a round table with those uh, poets. Um, and as well a Q&A at the end, so please, if you have questions, keep them in mind and don't hesitate. Um, and we will end with an open poetic mic. Um, so I encourage you to come on stage to share with us at the language of your convenience as well. Um, we as well have the pleasure to have two artists with us who are gonna do some live art at the same time as the poets are reading their poems. Yasser Garbi, and we also have Zaina Dia, who is preparing, um, and she will also do uh, the performance live art at the same time. I would like to thank our core organi organizers, the ASU, ASU, sorry, uh, the Bridges Coalition. Uh, with whom we have Stephen with us, and he will also take part of the panel discussion as well. And um, as well, the Learning Planet Alliance and the Learning Planet Institute. So we're going to start with our first poet. Yes, who is Tai Ojo. Um, we will have a pre-recording video because he wasn't able to come here. And Ojo Tai is a Nigerian writer, poet, and activist. And his current project is about neo-colonialism, institutional, oh, institutionalized violence, and ecological trauma um, in the Niger Delta. Hello everyone, my name is Tayajo and it's a privilege to come before you to perform some of my poems for the Mood for Poetic Future event, an hybrid event for the Learning Planet Institute, Paris, alongside with uh, the Learning Planet Festival on the 26th of this month. The first poem I will read in the site, Strange Future. Unlike hope which triggers with future expectations, my daughter insists we can build the world around us again, if we choose. Any tree can become a ladder. And my heart begins to turn again. Is it memory if I stand by a riverside full of trash and plastic? Once someone told me I inherited my mother's heart. When I love, I press every moment like a garlic clove. I mean, my country is changing. How tricky this makes the world drop. And yet the earth feels hotter today. When I say I miss home, what I mean is I'm filled with dread. I doubt if this cyclone can distinguish my mother's poor shelter. Famine comes quietly, and I see through the long silence for the songs my mother taught me, while attempting to describe the many days of roaring fall. Yeah, the green pastures have become dust. Carcasses of goats and sheep 
lined the roadsides. All climbing refugees are pastoralists, yet the reverse is false. There has to be a way to save this certain planet without sacrificing myself or my lovelies, the cholera. Nothing restores the sense of loss less ambiguously than the feeling in which something is at stake. Do you think the earth will ever achieve healing? What about hope? There is too much smog. I am awake. It's smoky outside. It must be a sandstorm. The terrible pants that flow down from the names for our transgressions. It reminds me of everything we fail to do. And what I do know is we have no imaginary future if we continue to stand on the same step ladder every few years and swap around, reduce emissions. Outside the trees flame, after the bushfire in Australia, the air keeps its dense shape. Surely drought and bushfire have the same face. I can barely remember the scent of her hands, my sister, an infant voice, home in my name, from my father's born in porch. It's taken a while for me to admit humanity ended a long time ago, but no one noticed. I look out the window and saw her from behind, the Kohala, the way she flung her fallen nets, like she was desperate and being eaten by a visible predator. And did I tell you that my country is a menacing cocktail of hydrogen pictures and gusty wind? In the silence of our house, hidden by shutters, I remember all the beautiful things suffocated by fumes. I remember thinking our policymakers were kind, but knowing they were mean. I remember thinking our prime minister was sober, but knowing he only speaks of rain, internal, economic growth. Sometimes I'm in a raging battle with my country. I can't stop thinking the human significance of environmental policies. And then I remember they are cherry bombs thrown into the crowd before it is divvied among the ghettos of time and air. This way, I mean to tell you, I am tired of circumstances of being here, waiting on the corner for a future mirage. Climate appetite. I live in a blanket of smoke. At times, my heart turns into bells. When I say we've lost it, I'm referring to the future. Home is falling apart. The blue, beautiful world my mother left behind needs our help. When I say I'm self flagellated, I mean my mouth, my tits, my tongue. The scrubland is changing. How tricky this makes the world drought. And our lazy elders still gather all its argument for polite emissions. Listen, memory dims. And the past becomes a pentimental, like a sin, a kind of snapshot, a photograph in my head. We and my extended family are all smiling, and they are not even the ones who survived the flood. Our next poet, who is a French chief poet officer at the Inc. of the Future, and he developed the concept of corporate poetry and is also as well an author of uh, several books, the last one being Poetic Leaders, uh, Poetry Will Save the World, and We Are All Poets. Please welcome Vincent Avency. Hello, everyone. Delighted to be here. I hope the same for you. Uh, the first poem is called uh, A Message to Poetic Leaders. Dear poetic leaders, citizens of the world, all beautiful souls in the quest for love, what will be left for us in the future if we can't do what's right in the present? We don't want to go down into history. We want to go up in the future. I mean, do we want to create a better society for the few 
or a better society for the future. In harmony with nature as mankind may have now matured. I don't know if big or small is beautiful, but I think together and forever are wonderful. Love and light mixed with a little bit of wisdom for a global happiness kingdom because the poetic leaders of the future, they care about the outcome of humanity and not only its income. Yes, a poetic leader for humanity and sustainability, imaginary, visionary, even revolutionary, as we're all responsible for the same thing, and that is for the living. So by all means and all dreams, reach for the stars, your star, to become what you truly are, from your deepest scar to your shining star. We all have a voice and we all have a choice so we can be part of the solution or part of the pollution. In the end, the future will be magic or tragic depending on how we act in it to save it. So be you and be useful. Be great and be grateful. That's the new beautiful, as we'll only be successful if our planet remains wonderful. So in this great turning and world transitioning, remember, we're not history in the making, we're the future and amazing. Oh, Captain, my captains, welcome aboard this universal poetic leadership. Bon voyage in this mankind can also be kind journey for the sake of our common fate on this exceptional planet because as poetry, as beauty, poetry will save the world and we're all poets. Thank you. Donc prenons soin, l'horizon d'un monde plus harmonieux au loin. Prenons soin, apprenons sobrement à faire mieux ou moins. Prenons soin, nos missions initiales être ou faire du bien. Prenons soin, un milliard de nos êtres tous ensemble en lien. Prenons soin, chaque vivant vaut la peine de bien vivre, point. Prenons soin, un appel dans le ciel, cher humain, tu viens. Prenons soin. Le baptême de nos êtres, si l'amour se joint, prenons soin, l'avenir grandit ose, tous ensemble, ou rien. Harmonie, H-A-R-M-O-N-I-E, c'est l'humain, en amour, qui rêve d'un monde, en osmose avec le nous, dans l'invisible des étoiles, harmonie. Alors, que l'émerveillement nous relie et nous réconcilie avec la vie et l'amour du vivant, pour que nous devenions tous des activistes de l'avenir et des alchimistes de la vie. Non pas pour transformer le plomb en or, mais pour avoir l'aplomb de transformer le monde en merveille, le monde en éveil, le songe en réel, le sombre en lumière, le bon en éden, telle une étincelle entre l'éphémère et l'éternel. Alors oui, devenons tous des leaders poétiques, des révolutionnaires à l'imaginaire visionnaire, des alchimistes altruistes et empathiques en charge du réenchantement et de notre émerveillement parce que nous sommes tous responsables au final de la même chose, à savoir du vivant. Et ce sera peut-être le chapitre suivant de notre roman intitulé « Autant en emporte le vivant ». Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Vincent. Um, for our next poet, uh, we will have Catherine Lemons. She is a writer and a professor at the Université du Québec. And she has published several books, the last one being Maillet les eaux in 2023. And her current work is about exploring creative writings, approaches to the Saint Laurent River, Estuary and Goal. Please enjoy. J'ai l'hiver contre tous mes murs, une vie perdue sur une autoroute qui ne mène plus nulle part. 
J'ai froid dans le dos et renoncé à retrouver l'amour et la mer. Mais je peux voir tout au fond de ma tasse, entre les feuilles de verre brisé, trois fleurs anciennes. Je pense que je pourrais m'arrêter pour toujours dans la douceur de nuit d'été, sous un tilleul ivre, suspendu dans l'air bleu, à aimer des fantômes. N'importe où entre les allées du Val d'Elsa et les rives de mon enfance. Sur mes lèvres, toutes mes vies de verre brisé, une rivière noire et quelques mielés. Bien avant le lac, j'avais des maisons dans les arbres, des terrains de jeu d'épinettes, les genoux écorchés, une petite sœur et toute la solitude du monde. J'avais une vie divisée, mais tout au milieu de la maison d'André poussait un arbre gigantesque. Quand je regarde les réseaux veineux de nos poumons, les bassins hydrographiques des grands fleuves, le petit ruisseau, la neige marine, les fractales sur ton manteau, je nous vois, dans toutes les formes, dans toutes les lignes, chaque sauve conduit contre ciel et terre, les tilleuls de Tvetaïeva, les tilleuls de Pavési, le verger caché dans la chambre d'Émilie. Je vois des territoires dépossédés ou habités en mendiant. Qu'importe si nous hallucinons le bleu des forêts noyées de pollen, qu'importe. Les ciels entravés, inversés, miroirs dans les miroirs dans les miroirs, des fourchaisons et rejets. Je ne parle pas de cœur mais de maisons, de maisons perdues. Quand nos plantations seront face à face, le soleil et la mort, même les arbres ne pourront plus nous sauver de nos manques d'amour, de nos manquements aux oracles. J'habite des mémoires de gestes simples aux lisières pour que la forêt reste pour qu'elle revienne gruger les champs, un peu comme quand, enfant, débraillé dans le sale de la vie, les piqûres, la boue, nous vivions d'enchantements brefs. Il y a un autre alphabet, obscur, enfoui, dans les sphaignes, les tourbières, les mues, à lire sur les lèvres. Quand mon père plante un arbre, je l'entends rêver à voix haute, Ici, un jour, je serai l'automne, la persistance des feuillages, les murmures contre le ciel, les grandes migrations. Par ensauvager, je veux dire, la richesse des fruits, des chemins cassés, dans la paume, la chenille d'un sphinx, le resplendissement d'un seul matin. Par amour, je veux aussi dire de nos vies courtes les rameaux et dans les craquelures de la cendre, les fleurs férales. Ok, now I'm delighted to welcome to the stage Mahdi Mansour, who is a Lebanese poet, a physicist and an educator, and Um, great friend as well, yeah. <laughs> um, so his poetry work uh, is widely recognized in Arabic and his books, poetry books, are also studied in university and schools. And you, you've you been featured in the first Arabic TED talk on physics and poetry as well. Please. Merci beaucoup. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us here today. Um, it's my first presentation here in Paris after a very fast event happened with Mr. Qasem Asi. Once I arrived to the city, like they welcomed me with a very nice poetry event, and this is like the more academic and more rigorous one. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Thanks, LPI, for all the support, like uh, us as students, as 
professors, as friends, as I'm very glad to be with you and thank you for opening a door in the festival, Olivier. Um, I want to thank the Arab part of the audience as well for being here, although they know the event is in English. <laughs> um, and I decided to read um, one poem in Arabic because I don't want to make it hard on those who don't understand the language. Um, but when I was working on the translation, like I was working with three fellows, uh, one of them is in the US uh, as a Harvard University uh, fellow working on the comparative literature between Arabic and English. And the other one is a Jordanian journalist who is very interested in, in translation of uh, uh, Arabic poetry. And the last one, uh, Amal Zayat, like she's the sound of the youth, and uh, she's an amazing poet uh, herself, as a translator as, as well. It happened that she's living in Paris, and I didn't know that. And we were working under the same sky on the same poem. So I will read one poem, and I will give part of my time to Amal, which is here today, to read the translation in English herself, if you, if you can do that. Uh, let me finish the poem first, and then I will call you. Um, so uh, I start with a small part. Um, look, I, I, I really like to tell the story of the poem, so it makes sense. But since I'm reading it in Arabic, then it's complicated a little bit. Um, like, I wish I were a tree. It's just the idea, I wish I were a tree. And you, you can imagine why I wish I were a tree. Amal will tell you later in English. And the second poem is under the, uh, the first line is, just close your eyes and imagine everyone is becoming a poet. Okay, so th those are the two poems that I'm gonna read. Th the first one is very short, so don't count it on me. Um, in Arabic, I say, Leitani shajratun. Leitani shajratun la ugadiru bayti wara al ahabbati idh yarhalun. Kullama hafara al nas sadri bi asma'ihim. قلت لا بأس أن يشرح العاشقون ليتني شجرة كنت لا أكتب الشعر في الأرض أدفن نفسي بها كي أكون ليتني شجرة وطني ضيق غير أن اعتزازي به كلما رف طير لأجلي منحت له وطنا في الغصون ليتني شجرة كي أبرهن أن الضياء الذي يتسلل من بين أوراق صدري إلى أرضه ليس ضوءا ولكن عيون Again, I'm very sorry for the audience that don't speak Arabic. I mean, this is the penalty for this event, having multilingual poets <laughs> on board. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope, I hope, like in Paris, like there was an event 10 years ago, and someone was reading Al Mutanabbi, who was a very classic, famous Arabic poet. And the French audience were like uh, clapping and engaging with the poetry that even we Arab don't understand. But the music of the language gets a lot of meaning for him. <laughs> so the second poem, I will read just two parts of it. Ahmed Aynaika Kalilan, Watakhayal, Law Anna Nasa Jamiyan, Batu Shuara. Yahduthu. أن يغدو ثمن الخبز العربي بعشر قصائد لابن الرومي والكوبتشينو بنشيدين لدانتي وتموت تعابير شتى وتختلف الأشياء قد يحدث أن تذهب للبقال ويذكر من شعر المتنبي شيئا فتعود بلا خبز ويصادف أن يفقد محصول العام من التين لأن الفلاحين انكسروا حين رأوا شمسا في الماء سيبقى من بين الكتب التوراة ومن بين الرسل الهدهد سيكون على الوردة ألا تذبل في النص وسيكون على أمل to continue the poem in English please <laughs> so Amal Zayat is a Lebanese uh, poet with three published books in English and she's reading the translation so that the others can understand thank you, thank you. good evening everyone First off, I want to thank Mr. Mahdi Mansour for giving me this space to be in my element again. And I think I'm going to start. So the first uh, poem is called Twigs Yearning for the Wind. Uh, it's from his book Weight Index and is translated by Fatima Al-Harti. I wish I were a tree, 
stays home when lovers depart. Whenever people carve my chest with their names, I say no problem, no problem. Also lovers can wound. I wish I were a tree who doesn't write poems, yet bury itself in the earth to be. I wish I were a tree, my home tight, yet my pride whenever a heart flutters for me. I grant him a home among the twigs. I wish I were a tree to prove that the light seeping from the leaves of my chest is not light, but organs of sight. The oak tree feeding on grandmother's chest in the grave became so much like her. What are trees but roads standing on one leg? This is not a sapling grown on its own under the window. Neither it is a rooster's crown. It's the head of a giant tree planted by some poet upside down in the other side of the globe. Age is a calculated curse. We age by the second to chew the disaster we invented the year unit. Meaning is delayed. We walk a meter per second on a two meter per second road. The second poem is called The Coffer of Vows and it's from his book The Shadow is a Dark Dawn and it's translated by me. Um, I'm a two dreams shorter, for my feet have worn down the street of the city I traversed. Do not anticipate my final ode to you. I dropped it in the sacred coffer of vows after a fervent prayer. Perchance it descends into the hand of a destitute daughter of the poor, and perhaps she happens to be of the dream weavers, so long she forgets an old loaf or a humble dwelling of straw and mud. And without a prior acquaintance, her mother would bring forth my name and pray for our destined reunion. In the here and now, I treat fruitlessly, perched on desires and whims. I discern no path closer to you except that of God, and no divine route closer to God than the radiant smile of a penurious skin, akin to hope. Be not worried. In God's will, no error shall transpire between you and her, not for any conceivable reason. Rather, because he laments for a realm that unites a vagabond poet and a famished beauty. The third poem is called Alphabet of Closed Windows. It's from his book. Yes, the first part, okay. <laughs> it's from his book, Earth is a Used Shoe. And it's translated by Nizar Sartawi. Close your eyes a while and imagine that all people have become poets. A kilogram of Arab bread may be sold for 10 poems by Ibn Rumi and a cappuccino for two canets by Dante. That a few terms die out as they are rarely used, such as rendezvous, law, kinship ties, family, tradition. Flights are canceled and traffic lights as well. It may happen that you go to the crocer and he recites some poetry by Al Mutanabbi. And so you come back without bread. And coincidentally, the fig crop for the year is lost because the farms were broken when they saw a sun in the water. Language will illuminate disorder in taverns, and language will illuminate disorder in quarters. Words will become so narrow until they get into the heart of wheat. Bravity will win against prayers. Prose will be sent to exile, and the calendar era will start with the day when Homer speaks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amal. Thank you so much. Shukran, Haji and Amal. Um, we're going to continue with a bit of indigenous ecological spirituality and the work of Juan Carlos Galeano, who is a um, poet and academic from uh, the Amazon region of Colombia. And he shared with us uh, some pre-recorded readings, three poems. Uh, mi nombre es Juan Carlos Caleano y mi poesía situada de modo crítico en medio de nuestros tiempos de cambio climático uh, está influenciada por una variedad de tradiciones eh, poéticas que van desde la tradición japonesa eh, hasta la tradición eh, norteamericana y, y la poesía surrealista. Uh, el proceso de elaboración de mis poemas uh, eh, también le debe mucho al modo mítico y a las cosmovisiones de las culturas indígenas y tradicionales eh, de la Amazonía y también del mundo. Paisajes. 
Una vez había un paisaje que salía con su río, sus animales, sus nubes y sus árboles. Pero a veces, cuando no se veía por ningún lado el paisaje con su río y sus árboles, a las cosas le tocaba salir en la mente de un muchacho. Unas tortugas se maravillan de que puedan aparecer en la mente de un muchacho. Claro que si no aparece ni el paisaje ni el muchacho, el río se queja, los árboles se quejan, las tortugas y otros animales se quejan. Se supo de unos árboles que mataron a una jovencita por desnudarse en la mente del muchacho. También las tortugas que salían en su mente lo acusan de vivir ahora en las nubes. Nada más natural que de tanto ir y venir desaparezcan unos ríos, desaparezcan unos árboles. Comentaron unas nubes que vivían muy tranquilas en la mente del muchacho. Curupira. Con un pie mirando adelante y el otro para atrás, el curupira camina por la selva, cuidando los animales y haciéndoles las trenzas a las palmeras jovencitas. Los cazadores le regalan tabacos al curupira para que les diga sus secretos. El curupira se fuma los tabacos y del humo se forman los caminos donde aparecen animales, árboles y frutas. Pero los hombres no deben llevarse todos los animales, árboles y frutas. El curupira podría soplar el humo para que desaparezcan los animales, árboles y frutas. Puede soplar todo su humo para que desaparezcan los caminos. También podría decirles a los animales sus secretos para cazar a los hombres. Uh, el curupira. Uh, el curupira es un, un, un ser sobrenatural del Amazonas, eh, eh, reportado en Brasil hace varios siglos. Uh, este ser sobrenatural uh, proviene de la espiritualidad ecológica de, de los pueblos uh, indígenas y no indígenas de, de la Amazonía. Eh, el curupira puede adoptar forma humana o animal para engañar y castigar a los cazadores y y personas que eh, destruyen las selvas. Mesa. Muchas veces la mesa sueña con haber sido un animal. Pero si hubiera sido un animal, no sería una mesa. Si hubiera sido un animal, se habría echado a correr como los demás cuando llegaron las motosierras a llevarse los árboles que iban a ser mesas. En la casa, una mujer viene todas las noches y le pasa un trapo tibio por el lomo como si fuera un animal. Con sus cuatro patas, la mesa podría irse de la casa. Pero piense en las sillas que la rodean y un animal no abandonaría a sus hijos. Lo que más le gusta a la mesa es que la mujer le haga cosquillas mientras recoge las migajas de pan que dejan los niños. Amazónicas. 1. Antes de que reinaran los hombres en Amazonia, el sol y las nubes eran la medida de las cosas. 2. De los ríos nacen peces, árboles y gentes. De las carreteras en las selvas nacen más carreteras. 3. El río y yo somos la misma cosa. Sin embargo, el río no soy yo y yo no soy el río. 4. Prefiero aventurarme en aguas traicioneras y selvas distantes que vivir con los ríos estresados de mis venas. 5. Solo podemos conocer la belleza infinita de un árbol en este momento. 6. El que yo pueda querer a un arco iris significa muchos lazos invisibles que nos unen. 7. 
Cuando un árbol o el río preocupados me dicen que no se quieren morir, yo me quiero morir. Ocho. Muchas personas en el mundo viven sin saber que en ellas hay multitudes de ríos. 9. Diríamos toda la verdad sobre Amazonia si en lugar de palabras usáramos gotitas de agua. Muchas gracias. Después, we have the Ariana Jara with us. She's uh, our youngest poet on the panel, I think, and a communication student at the FAP school. And she also won the contest um, Le Projet Moteur in 2020, if I'm not mistaken. And she participated in the project uh, Tavoir Conte, so your, your voice matters, with the LPI. Please welcome on stage. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ariana, I'm 20, and uh, I'm so happy to be here with uh, such amazing people. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to read a poem I wrote about uh, school harassment, a very important subject for me, so I have one version in French and one in English, so I hope you will enjoy both of them. On the path to school, where sorrows intertwine, on the road to hell, where shadows define, I step into the port, I've got my back. Seated alone in the corner, playground echoes my pain, awaiting executioners for my daily disdain. Insults, blows, threats, a daily lottery's game. With luck this time, jackpot avoids my name. There he is, I wear the mask, all eyes on me. Hurt heavy, survival di dictates, choice not free. Beast takes over, sparing excessive pain. Where man has hurt, the beast bears ego's reign. On the path to school, where sorrows intertwine. On the road to hell, where shadows define. I step into the port, I've got my back. The first punch paints the world red. Hints of blue emerge, yet no one moves ahead. Then brushes multiply, adding their mark to the show. Joining a collection titled The Art of an Executioner's Glow. Go rot, you're worthless, you mean nothing. Send there a server, it's all confusing. The beast howls while the man weeps in despair. Every bro I'll deliver leaves a bruise on my heart's bare. On the path to school where sorrows intertwine. On the road to hell where shadows define. I step into the part. I've got my back. Back at home, whispers linger in my pockets deep. Insults, mockery, threats, the bell's ominous beep. Sleepy luds, voices persistently echo. Monsters now, now behind screens, not just in the closet's shadow. The beast rests, yet the man keeps watch. Guilt prevents me from finding sleep's touch. Messages scroll like bullets fired up close. Now behind the rifle, just moments ago, I stood exposed. On the path to school, where sorrows intertwine. On the road to hell, where shadows define. I step into the port, I've got my back. Days repeat in an infernal loop. Body aches, heart aches, in pain I stoop. I don't care if the ending's not clear. The pain needs to cease, the end is near. He was sitting there alone in the corner, waiting each day for his executioners. Insults blow threats, a lottery every day, too often winning the jackpot in a cruel play. He's gone, I leave the mask, 
all lies upon my plight. A heavy heart reveals I held the power to make it right. The beast has gone, leaving man to face his own hope. For where man has hurt, the beast has ego. Thanks. Sur le chemin de l'école, sur le chemin de l'enfer, on se met dans le rôle, on assure ses arrières. Assis seul au coin de la récré, à ressasser ma peine, j'attends mes bourreaux pour ma sentence quotidienne. Insulte, coup, menace, chaque jour c'est le loto. Avec un peu de chance cette fois, je ne gagnerai pas le gros lot. Il est là, j'enfile le masque, tous les regards sur moi. J'ai le cœur lourd, mais pour survivre, je n'ai pas le choix. Alors la bête prend le pas, m'épargnant trop de mots. Car là où l'homme a un cœur, la bête a de l'ego. Sur le chemin de l'école, sur le chemin de l'enfer, on se met dans le rôle, on assure ses arrières. Le premier coup part, repeignant le monde en rouge. Des pointes de bleu apparaissent, mais personne ne bouge. Puis les pinceaux se multiplient, ajoutant leurs traces au tableau qui rejoindra leur collection, nommée l'art d'être bourreau. Va crever, tu sers à rien, tu vaux rien. Destinateur ou destinataire, je ne sais plus bien. La bête hurle pendant que l'homme pleure. Chaque coup que je donne me fait un bleu au cœur. Sur le chemin de l'école, sur le chemin de l'enfer, on se met dans le rôle, on assure ses arrières. Retour au foyer, J'entends leur murmure au fond de ma poche. Insultes, moqueries, menaces, rythmées par un son de cloche. Le sommeil ne vient plus, leur voix résonne constamment. Les monstres ne sont plus dans le placard, mais derrière un écran. La bête dort, mais l'homme veille. La culpabilité m'empêche de trouver le sommeil. Les messages défilent comme des balles tirées à bout portant. Me voilà derrière le fusil, alors qu'il y a peu j'étais devant. Sur le chemin de l'école, sur le chemin de l'enfer, on se met dans le rôle, on assure ses arrières. Les journées se répètent dans une boucle infernale. J'ai mal au corps, j'ai mal au cœur, j'ai mal. Il est temps de mettre un terme à cette histoire insupportable. Tant pis si je n'arrive pas au point fi. Il était assis là, seul, au coin de la récré, à ressasser sa peine. Il attendait ses bourreaux pour sa sentence quotidienne. Insultes, coups, menaces, chaque jour c'était le loto. On lui faisait bien trop souvent gagner le gros lot. Il n'est plus là, je retire le masque, tous les regards sur moi. J'ai le cœur lourd en comprenant que j'ai toujours eu le choix. La bête s'en est allée, laissant l'homme face à ses mots. Car là où l'homme a un cœur, la bête a de l'ego. Merci. Merci Ariana pour cette émotion. Um, our next poet uh, is going to be on video. Um, it's the work of Abdel Monim El Alali, and is going to share with us his poem, and is also going to share his own story. Ma'am, we're all in luck. What's up, Captain? Me feel me on. Thank you for us. It is so real as a man. We're too sweet. How I am not coming. Ma'am, don't you act like you're going to lose. كلما وجدت إجابة أجد نفسي أرقص مع الحياة وأتجول في أحلامي مع أسئلتي ثم ثم يأتي يقيني ليقول لي أنت السؤال والإجابة على حد سواء لذا يعيش مع السؤال وكن أنت الإجابة اسم ديالي عالمون إبن عداني فرحمة الزاب كتعطي نتقسم معكم القصة ديالي والقصة على كيفاش تعندت كيفاش تخير في النظرة ديالي على رأسي للمجتمع للحياة بصفة عامة غادي نهضر على على المعاش اللي عشتو هنا كيفاش تعلمت فوسط الحومة ديالي أنا خرجت من المدرسة ألفين وثلاثة كانت عندي ثلاثة عام لعدة عوامل أول حاجة غادي نهضر على اللغة اللي كانت سايدة في ذلك الوقت نهضر على اللغة ديال القوة والعنف اللي كانت اللي كنت كنعيشها في كل بلاصة كنت كنعيشها في الدار هي عندها الأسرة عندها عند السلطة وعظمى أن هي تقول لك كيفاش بغيتي تكون، هي تقول لك عمل هادي هادي اللي مزيانة وهادي هادي اللي ماشي مزيانة، كانت هذا واحد النوع ديال القوة اللي كان اللي كانت كيافع وكاطب 
ما نعرفش نعبر عن المشاعر ديالي، ما كنعبرش على الافكار ديالي، ما كنعبرش على انا شنو اللي بغيت. في الزرقاء كذلك، في الزرقاء بان اللي واعب واللي يقدر يضرى واللي يقدر يدافع على راسو، في المدرسه كذلك الا ما قريتي شي مزيان غادي تضرى، الا ما الا ما نجحتي شي غادي تضرى وغادي تسمى تينا كاس وتينا ما كتعرفش تقرا، هادو كامل ما عرفت اللغه اللي سميتها لغه القوه، لغه الحوت. إذا إذا كان داوي لأنني خرج من المدرسة ما كنتش كعرف نقرا العادي في اليابان وخرج ديستي وستن ولكن بديك اللغة اللي قوة باغا يكون قوي الأدب ولكن فاش تمارس عليا العوف والقوة كنت نمشي للمتحف جبت واحد السخرة ويجي ستة بسوا ولكن الصاك ناقص ما عرفتش نقرا فاكتوها بعد قال لي تنظر ما غادي ما غادي تقرا قال لي السيدي قال لي الله ما غادي تعلم تقرا كان هذا النقطة هذه بالنسبة لي اللي بقاها صحاب وفلا أنا 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 ماشي هيدا ماشي هذيك اللغة اللي كانت خاصني وفي قصة 2017 ورجعت نحي ديالي عند الجاس الجاس كان جالس في الدارجة وكان جالس مع الدراري اللي كتفكر في الهجرة اللي كتفكر كيفاش أنا بديت تعلم كيفاش تبيع المخدرات كيفاش تعطى المخدرات بزاف ديال الحاجات اللي كانوا حتى هما داخلين تنسي حاجة لأن ما كان ما كتعيش واحد اللغة في الصور ديالك لأن تي ما تعبر الإحساس ديالك ما ما تعرف كيفاش تتعلم ما تعرف بزاف ديال الحاجات كترجع لأن تي شي كامل يا داك الشيء كتحس هو اللي كيعبر كيعبر عليك ولكن في نفس الدكان اللي كتقاسموا فيها هاد الشيء هذا اللي كتقاسموا فيها المخدرات اللي كنتقاسموا فيها المعاناة ديالنا كانوا شباب آخرين كنت كارس حايضة في واحد النهار في الدرجة كان واحد مشي واحد ديال الشيء كان كاسمع أصوات ديال الشيء يا نعم الشباب نصوروك، يا نعم نصوروك، فواحد واحد غادي يشوف المجموعة ديال الشباب فرحانين مع بعضياتهم، بشتي تلعب بعضياتهم، الدراري يلا نصورو، يا نعم باش ما نتعطلوش، غادي نتلاقاو في الدار معايا باش نمشيو نصورو. جات لينا غريبة كأول مرة نشوف الشباب مع بعضياتهم فرحانين، ضحكانين، وحاس فرحان والشراكة، واحد الابتسامة، وكانت لي جميل في الآن بأن هذيك الشباب اللي كانوا كيعيشوا فرحة مع بعضياتهم، كانوا كيوجهوا الدعوة لأي واعي، بقيت شوف قال استا بغيت تمشي أنا ندير ندعي. شفتو لي غريبة بديك الوقت ما كنتش قادر نقول له معاه واش نكون معاكم ولكن واحد المرة بقيت انا هاد الجار هاد بقيت كنمشي معاه بقيت كنربي معاه واحد الثقة كنضحك كنعبر على راسي يا ضاو الشباب وحنا غادي نمشي نحضر حتى هنا وكانت أول حاجة بالنسبة لي مع الشباب ياسين والمصارع جا عند واحد الشاب وعطاني واحد الورقة قال لي قرا فيا هاد السيناريو قرا عليا في الورقة ولي عايشين قلت شو السعيدة شو أنا ما كان عاش يقرأ عاش يقوت الله حد التيقة مي جاز التيقة هذي جاز في الدرجة مع الشباب اللي تقبلني كنا هذا تربط التيقة تربط التيقة ديال التعدير بأن لا آه أبغى آه جاز عطاش حاجة أجي من تسد ما جات الفكرة مني ومن الشباب ديال الحي وكذلك مع المسائل الجماعية خلقنا من بعض على سنين عالين وتعلو بينا كانت عن المقرأ وتعلمت نقرأ الحمد لله من تم بس النقطة بأن ما قادر شي إلا قادر تما بديت كنخدم تما بديت كن كنحب الخدمة نهائي تما بديت كنحب راسي تما تبدل لك الصورة على راسي إي فوا كتبدل لك الصورة على راسك إي فوا كتحبر لي المشاعر ديالك إي فوا كيجيبو واحد اللغة مشتركة اللي كتخلينا بأن كتعبر على الإنسانية ديالنا كيعيش الحب Okay. Thank you, everyone. We're gonna close the performance right now, and we're gonna move to the round table. And Lo will be our moderator on this part, so I give her a mic. Thank you, Louise. Um, I'm also an M2 student at Learning Planet Institute. But before we start chatting with our our poets, I just like to welcome Gustavo Merino, who is here from UNESCO. Uh, he is the director, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of social policies. And you probably have a few words to share with us about the power uh, of the arts and poetry in transforming the way we do policy in a time of crisis. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. To be uh, this learning planet is is fantastic, and I, I really enjoy the uh, the poems. And um, so I'll be relatively brief. I uh, just want to 
Shepard, you, you mean for UNESCO, we, we share the vision that the po poetry and the arts are not just a form of creative expression, but they, they are very powerful agents for societal change and transformation. Uh, we all know, you know, a, a poem can evoke a, a much like a painting or other forms of art can, can evoke very deep feelings, reflections, and think and make us uh, reshape the narratives and foster understanding of the world and the potential futures. Uh, poetry is in, it's in contact, direct contact with the essence of things, and it really goes to, to touch the universal feelings. So in that way, it's a very important tool for community building and improvement across the world. And that's what we want to foster as well and why UNESCO cares about the arts and poetry. Um, we know, for instance, you know, we can evoke, a, say, for some feelings of love by a poem of by Neruda, or we can think of, you know, of horror and sadness or grief, like, uh, for example, I can feel that a uh, poem by Wilfred Owen on the w First World War is more powerful than a picture, for instance, in many ways. Uh, and of course, we can see the simple beauty of a haiku, but we can also see, we just heard uh, Galeano, for instance, and uh, I remember one of, uh, of his very short poems on the Amazonians. You know, you were, of, I, I obviously cannot be able to, I don't know it by heart, and I cannot really pretend to, to, to be as uh, poetic as he was, but you know, the, the, this idea that, you know, that the river uh, leads to life, uh, whereas a road, a concrete road, only leads to concrete roads. And I think that can be very much more powerful than many speeches, many doctoral research, many you know, scholarly work that, uh, about the problems of, uh, uh, for instance, of, of environmental damage. Um, so um, the point is that poetry is a, a tool for for change, for resistance, for for improvement across the world, and uh, and uh, it's a very it, it we should really build on it to to create change. Uh, there's a saying, for instance, that is very common in political circles, in especially in the United States, that. Uh, uh, you you campaign when you're campaigning for elections. You campaign in verse, but you govern in prose. And the idea is, uh, I mean, it seems a bit obvious, no? Uh, yes, uh, you campaign in verse because you you want property, you want to evoke, you want to convince people. But the truth is that 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 phrase is a bit wrong because you you also should govern uh, in verse. You should all go govern in poetry uh, because I said, you know, the the. Uh, the, the way you can shape emotions, you can feel, lead to change is very powerful. And we can all think, for instance, uh, uh, how a powerful speech, for instance, of Martin Luther King talking about, I had a dream, how that led to change, or, or can, we can hear some words by Gandhi, or we can say how some leaders have evoked people uh, to change in times of great distress. Uh, but also, it's not just from the leaders using uh, poetic language to, to, to lead to change, but it's also, also the, the change that can come about from, from people, from grassroots effects, in forcing society to, to change, to reshape how they do, and thereby also to change what the leader says. So anyway, I'll be fe uh, finishing uh, just a few more words. Um, I want to come from UNESCO, so obviously I have to talk to a bit about UNESCO, and uh, I said we, we really care about supporting the arts, but we see, and see it as an important way of transforming, uh, leading to change. Uh, so we are fully committed to the diversity, to the arts, and, uh, and the role they play. And uh, uh, for instance, the most program uh, in my division, the management of social transformations, we really need to use and think about the arts in terms of shaping and uh, leading to change. And this also aligns very well to, to our, our work on futures, futures literacy and foresight. Uh, you were speaking earlier, for instance, of, uh, of, uh, of you know, do you say the word, uh, you want the few or the future? No, I, I, I really like that. Uh, so, so we really have to, to, to work on that. And just to conclude, we have committed to that in, in, in UNESCO, and I really thank you for the opportunity to be here and share these thoughts with you. Thank you. Uh, if I were to uh, riff a little bit on, uh, on some of the comments and observations we just had for, from Gustavo Marino. Um, Gustavo, of course, 
um, is a director of social policy at, at UNESCO in the social and human sciences sector. And Bridge is one of the partners sponsoring this event, uh, is within the uh, social and human sciences, uh, and especially within the MOST program that Gustavo mentioned uh, in, his, in his iteration there. And uh, we are the humanities-led sustainability science coalition uh, within the UNESCO MOST program. Uh, and our mandate, our mission, is to mobilize uh, humanistic discourses, humanistic knowledge, domains, disciplines, and other uh, human knowledge uh, uh, areas that have not so successfully uh, entered into the science policy interface, for instance, that represent very strong uh, uh, and powerful traditions of knowledge and wisdom and potential for action that, uh, that we haven't managed to mobilize as effectively as we could and should uh, in facing the climate crisis, the biodiversity crisis, the pollution and degradation of our o oceans, what, the poly crisis that we're in the midst of now in the 21st century. So um, I think that what I took away partly from what Gustavo said was that you know poetry can bring direct contact with the essence of things. You know it provides an, um, uh, more than just pretty words. It provides um, meditations and considerations that move beyond mere utility and effectiveness when we begin thinking about policies and how we can actually shape um, uh, the, the necessary and, and the flourishing futures that the planet and all of the planet's inhabitants really need and deserve. Um, and so beyond that, you know, I would, I would sort of suggest that poetry off, also offers a way to, to touch universal dimensions of humanity. Uh, pardon me? Oh, it is. Oh, uh, well, I, I don't really need it to anymore, but um, okay, okay. Um, it offers a sort of transgenerational wisdom and cross-cultural experience. We've heard here today poets reading in Arabic, in uh, Spanish, in French, and English. Uh, and we've tried, though the tech the technology hasn't always um, sort of met our best ambitions, our goals. Um, we've, we've struggled with it a little bit here and there. Um, we've tried to provide um, translations in real time as much as possible for these. And um, that's because poetry really transcends cultures. Poetry transcends languages. Um, and it enables us to transcend the inevitable differences of our own more limited perspectives those cultural, the economic, the political, the gendered perspectives. Uh, and all of these reflect the diversity and tensions uh, uh, that our policies, frankly, must address successfully if they have any hope of having the impacts that we need them to have to achieve the transitions we're facing in challenging times in the, in the 21st century. So, in the process of participating in the poetic and the artistic, we're all elevated and we're all lifted to the potential of achieving what we can't always as individuals, what we can't always as individual cultures or societies or communities. Um, this is the true hope, I think, not only of the poets who articulate these deeply human and varied uh, experiences of life on our fragile planet, um, but also the audiences who communicate and commune with those poets, who participate in these poetic visions uh, as listeners, as animated creative entities in their own right. Um, and so all of us, in fact, benefit in this participation from an enhanced or perhaps a reinvigorated agency um, that, it, that it's really necessary for us to grasp hold of, to catch like lightning in a bottle uh, and, and make the best use of um, as we, we come to sort of face the challenges that are earthly challenges, uh, that, are, um, that are human challenges across cultures, across languages, across geographies, across nation states, across classes, and that 
are also beyond human challenges. Uh, the challenges to our brethren uh, and sister species on the planet um, who are greatly affected by the activities um, carried out in the human sphere. So what I would say, maybe sort of moving towards a bit of a flourish, because I'm a, uh, a little bit on, yeah, is that uh, this event, we were really excited about doing this event because it gave us an opportunity to forward some conversations that have been happening in the last year between the Learning Planet Institute, between the UNESCO Most Bridges Coalition, uh, between the Turn It Around uh, uh, project uh, led at Arizona State University by my, my colleague, Iveta Solova. By the way, I'm channeling Iveta as well as myself uh, in these comments here. Iveta is in Tbilisi uh, right now, so she couldn't be here with us in Paris for this, but this talk is for both of us, and we've both prepared it. And what we've begun to talk about is the idea of mobilizing perhaps a moving poetry festival that could move around to different communities around the world and from which we could take the wisdom and the agency and the expressed vision and creative um, uh, vigor of people from all walks of life, certainly from youth, uh, but other, always, also from, from people who fall outside of the technocratic discourses that dominate policy work, let's say, um, poetry, you can say, sometimes falls out of policy and falls out of policy discourse. Poetry has the ability to bring it back in. And so what I think we see a great potential in is mobilizing, uh, creating a platform where we can begin to get contributions from people from all over the world and begin to curate them. And I would hope this is something we've been discussing on and off with Learning Planet Institute, with UNESCO, with the MOST program, with Bridges, with ASU, with other partners, how we might then begin to build on that to um, elicit um, a different kind of knowledge, a different kind of wisdom that can, we can work to bring back into policy contexts in different ways. The modality that you've seen in this screen behind during the, um, during the uh, readings, and I'll, I'll end with this comment, is a modality called Turn It Around. Um, it's these cards where artwork, some of it folk art, some of it professional art, work of professional illustrators and artists, and, and some of amateurs, um, has been mobilized to um, uh, be part of this modality where we have art uh, uh, connecting with storytelling, with personal stories, with poetry, uh, with lyrical expressions in ways that can help to, um, particular ideas that have great merit and deserve further attention to resonate. Uh, and this is a modality that we're now beginning to talk about. How could we actually move this around, collect these poetic expressions, these storytelling expressions, this artwork, bring them together, create exhibitions, create readings such as this one in a sort of a roving or a moving festival. Uh, and in this, at the same time, begin to curate the inputs that come into these festivals from the different communities around the world, not just here in Paris, not just in the global north, not just in Europe, but everywhere we can reach through our pretty extensive networks. The Learning Planet Alliance has an amazing network. Bridges is growing an amazing coalition and network globally. UNESCO certainly has amazing connections throughout the world, as do a number of other partners that we're developing this with. So I would say watch this space. Watch the space of Learning Planet Institute. Watch the Bridges space. Our, our website is bridges.earth, easy to remember. Um, and the turn it around uh, space and look to see uh, announcements about our willingness to actually bring new partners into co-production that bring the arts and poetry and stories to bear on environmental and other sustainability issues that are really the central issues in many ways that we're, we're facing on the planet these days. So I, that's, that's it for me now, so thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, Stephen, um, for taking the time to share your thoughts and experience with us. Um, 
we've heard poems from a lot of different places, a lot of different lived experiences, some more political than others, some more corporate than others. Um, and I think one of the interesting things with the panel we have here is you're all poets, but you come from completely different backgrounds. Yet, despite whatever uh, experience you had before, you've moved towards poetry as, I don't know if tool is the right way to define it, but you've moved towards poetry as a mean to make sense of life and how messy it is, or at least to do something with the time you have. Uh, on earth. So I just wanted to uh, ask all three of you to maybe comment a little bit uh, about where you're coming from. I was very unfamiliar with corporate poetry before I met Vincent recently, so I'm, I'm very interested. How is corporate poetry welcomed in the world of business? What, How do we tread the line between, um, you know, these words, they're important and poets tend to take care of words that get overused or dismissed or die in everyday conversations. How do we make sure that this isn't what happens in spaces that are maybe more inclined towards marketing, greenwashing, peace washing? So I'd, I'd love to hear what you have to say about your experience of corporate poetry. Yeah, whichever. Thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Um, a lot of questions. Uh, um, I come from a background, or I have been a, a passion for poetry for um, since I was a, a teenager, and uh, I graduated in a business school. I used to work for Microsoft. Also, I had the opportunity to go twice, do a round the world trip, and and that was a, a moment of time where I could actually just. Uh, uh, write about what the world was inspiring, what the encou human encounters that I, that I was meeting, it was uh, inspiring also. And it really felt like poetry was a way to uh, to deliver a message, to have an impact on the world. And like Gustavo was saying uh, uh, about leaders also, is a, a, um, a speech is an action. Words, uh, 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 words are actually coming before reality. They make reality. And so it's very important for leaders to understand that the impact of words. And that's why as poets, the, you know, you can talk about poetry and the way you actually play with words, how you can make people dream with it. And you know, in the t in antiquity times, basically the, the poets were actually those in the heart of the city that was here to give a horizon for the world of tomorrow. So it's good to reconnect also to that engaged poetry to change the world also with it. Uh, um, to connect yourself to your true human self, to your vulnerability, to your intimacy, part of that, to actually connect to our humanity and to find your singularity and to be in service of our humanity. And that's basically the idea about the poetic leadership part is about whoever we are, we all have a gift to the world, all have a singularity, so it's about having the audacity to really truly be ourselves, to live poetically our, our lives with who we are as a gift to the world, and to actually uh, be in service to humanity in the field that we actually choose. So in uh, corporations, is basically that. It's about talking about how we can humanize corporations, how we can actually change the course to actually give a, um, a, a public mission to corporations so that actually they're in service to the planet, to the people, to our society, and also to yeah really reconnect to the values of life the human values behind life so it's a uh, it's you know I, I tend to say that um poetry like english today are the basically the two modern esperantos one in english because it's basically they are a language of international communication but poetry also because it's the language of the heart the heart where you write with your heart and people feel it with your heart so it's basically no matter the language that's why all the poems that we actually saw really beautiful even even if i don't we don't understand what it's saying it's just beautiful touches you because you can feel the people just really truly being themselves in their aura so it's a, you know there's nothing more powerful than somebody that's aligned with what he or she says and when you're the magic of poetry is basically that there's a great uh, saying that's probably the best def definition i find about poetry by Fairlin Getty, he's a italian american poet he said Poetry is the voice of the singular form it is the voice of the fourth of the singular form basically 
after the he and she and the we, in between that. So when you're writing in poetry, you're basically between yourself and the world, the, the future and the present, in the space in between. So when you're writing, really connected to the soul of mankind, to the you know to the to the essence of things, because you're not truly writing as yourself, but in a little, little step uh, uh, on the side. And that's really what happens, and that's why there's magic in, in in poetry and to that. So yeah, basically, you know, where is it, where, whereas it's to connect yourself to who you are, to really like connect yourself with others also, to collaborate, to co-write the future together, and to reenchant the world. You know, in Paris, you know, usually say that we 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 live in, we live in depoetized societies, and I always take that 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 metaphor. But basically, when I'm in Paris, I have the chance to go out during the weekends and the suburbs. But when I'm in Paris, I don't touch the ground, the earth, because I'm touching concrete, and I don't see the skies because it's polluted. So I can really can ele elevate myself with a soulful m m mindset. So really, it's a, it's about really taking time to uh, really reconnect to the nature of things. That's why I think poetry is really essential to, uh, to yeah, really reconnect to why are we here, what are we serving, you know, what's you know, apart from the short-term financials, what about the long-term essentials? And that's that's the uh, basically what I'm trying to. Doing so, um, yeah, I have the chance to uh, to collaborate with all the big companies in France and around the world to actually change the the, the mindset of the leaders to really c connect themselves to their their human side and uh, because you know they're really impactful. You know, big companies, you know, they talk to millions or billions of people sometimes, and it's uh, yeah, it's a great way to actually uh, change the course of the world and try to you know bring in a little bit more reenchantment. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, I think a lot of what he says resonates with um, Karima Kadawi, who was supposed to be here, but unfortunately is down with flu. We won't show everything she said because I think, unfortunately, in the interest of time, uh, we need to be reasonable. Um, but she is the executive president of Tamkin Communities Foundation, and she also uses poetry uh, as a practice to humanize and through fading structures, essentially, catalyzes change in Morocco at a public policy level. So I, I think it would have resonated, but I wanted to mention her because she sent us a lot of work and it feels normal to acknowledge it. Um, Ariana, uh, you're here this evening as uh, the face of the youth. Um, <laughs> you shared with us a, a beautiful poem that was um, in a way quite heartbreaking. What what brought you to to poetry and and why that choice of a creative expression well poetry is very important to me because um i write as long as i can remember <laughs> and uh i think in a way what i love about about art and poetry is that it puts everyone on the same level what i mean is that Wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever the color of your skin, your gender, your age, you can create something. Of course, we don't have the same means to create, but we can create in our unique way. And that's what I love about poetry and art. And uh, for me, poetry is very important because it's the only way I can escape in another world when life is too hard or society is too heartbreaking. <laughs> and, uh, well, when I'm in this other world, I, I look at it and I, I observe how it is, how I imagine this perfect world. And well, I try to take uh, as much positivity as I can and uh, bring back uh, to to this world. And uh, I hope with my word I can have a, a a little impact. And I do everything that I can to to teach young people that our words have a powerful impact and we can change the world if. Uh, the world want to listen to us, but uh, we can do it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Maddie, you're a physicist by training, an educator, um, and a poet. Uh, with I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you link uh, physics and, and poetry and uh, why poetry has always been um, a companion to, to your days. Yeah, thanks for this question. Actually, um, usually the, the common sense that people say that science and poetry are much different, while I believe that they are quite similar. And uh, absorbing and understanding this commonality between those two fields will, for me, change the education and the next generation. Um, physics, by definition, is observing the natural phenomena analyzing them, and then formulating them mathematically. So it's like a three-step towards fi finding something interesting in physics. While poetry, for me, is also observing natural phenomena and social phenomena, and something like that, analyzing them. And instead of formulating what we see with mathematics, can I call it versifying it or like writing it with verses? Uh, I don't I don't have a word to explain the situation. So two thirds of the journey is the same for poets and physicists at the same time. And when I talk about poetry, I differentiate between poetry and the poem. So writing a poem is something, and being a poet, imagining like a poet is something else. For me, um, teaching generations using proper poetry how to imagine, how to see the world uh, in a different eye, how to see the other side of the story is much more important than writing a poem itself. For instance, a lot of scientists who like, came up with new ideas, at the moment, the aha moment, when they just found the, the correlation between two things, this is for me a poetry moment. And then they take it into science it depends on which field in science they're working in. Uh, also, there is a very interesting quote for Jubran Khalil Jubran, which happens to be Lebanese as well, like he's a Lebanese writer. He says, between the scientist and the writer, there is a green field. If the scientist moves toward poetry, he becomes a philosopher. While if the poet moves towards the scientist, he becomes a prophet. I'm, I'm not here to just to verify or qualify the saying, but he has something in it, um, like merging those two fields together in schools, in universities, beyond the disciplinary approaches in education is like my mission. And that's why I believe in physics, in biology, in engineering, in, in any field, like interdisciplinary approaches is very important. And if we uh, prepare generations to understand poetry and to think like poets, I believe that the golden box will open. And I can give you a very sad story about, because I, w I used to work in pro producing curricula for generations. Like we search for a poem that serves a certain objective. We don't search for poetry. We, serve, we search for a poem that carries a glossary of word or verbs or a way to teach the children rather than searching for the essence of the meaning, which is something different. That's, that's why I'm differentiating between being a poet and writing a poem. I don't, like every scientist, without writing any poem, they are poets by, by design and by nature. And that's why probably I'm here in LPI, where interdisciplinary approaches, like putting me in contact with all of those great people. And I really wanted the uh, professor from Swatedi to talk more about the mood of poetry, but it seems he's keeping his time for someone else. <laughs> I think that's enough. Yeah, th thank you. Um, I'm very aware of time, and at uh, 7.15, we'll be opening the mic um, for questions, but also if anybody wants to take the stage. Um, before, so before we move on to Ashley, Karima is going to share what she has to say, uh, because it's uh, important, and we are honored that she sent something through. I just, um, I think a lot of what you said made me think of Audre Lorde's essay, uh, Poetry is Not a Luxury, and uh, sometimes we lose sight of that. And at the same time, um, as somebody who struggles with life and depression sometimes, I don't think I'd be here if there wasn't poetry. 
Um, I just want to send you a question, Stephen, uh, to wrap up before we start talking um, with Karima. You're using poetry in the field of policy uh, to make young people's voices clearer and more heard and see if we can bring them into transformative potential. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, please? Sure. Um, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we're... So both young people, but, but people from all walks of life, really. So um, who are the people, who are the, uh, the communities of people um, that fall outside of policy discourse? Um, uh, part of the vision we've been discussing in the last years, last year is let's highlight some of these occluded perspectives, some of these perspectives that um, uh, represent very uh, uh, sort of timeless human preoccupations and concerns um, that uh, policy is all about. But sometimes that poetic aspect falls out of the policy, out of the way policy is conducted uh, linguistically and otherwise. So the idea is how can we actually center that again and be working actively to be bringing in these perspectives to remind our very admirable sort of public servant policymakers that they are what is at stake, that it's their futures and their presence that are actually at stake, and that um, there are clear implications. No policymaker is unaware of this. But sometimes, in the moment, uh, it doesn't hurt to be reminded. So I think that we can draw upon the wealth of individual utterances through poetry, through storytelling, through art, in ways that sometimes it's harder to find an entryway into policy discourse. And so that is part of our ambition. Let's find fora let's, uh, where we can actually bring these into those fora, have them right outside the chamber where the policymakers are working in the form of an exhibition, in the form of um, poetry readings, uh, and in the form of creative dialogue that the policymakers can partake in as well and be influenced by as they're carrying out their own really valuable work. Thank you. Um, before we close the conversation, could we play Karima's contribution, please? As dear friends, do we realize that society means friendly association with others, that the root socius means companion, to feed together, and that the root of friend means loving, to love? Do we realize that person means to sound through, do we realize that under and understand means between, to stand in the between? Do we realize that human, humanity, humility are words that root in the fecund humus we are, to blossom together our world in and with our world? Do we realize that meaning also meant remembering? Do we realize that when we realize, we realize? Poet in Arabic is Sheir. It means, and I quote the interpretation of the scholar Pablo Benito, the one who realizes the intuition, who has a subtle perception of that which remains hidden, the one who perceives, who has the experience of the divine poetry that constitutes the being, who hears, has the awareness of the poetic rhythm of the inherent harmony of the universe, and hence, participates in the recitation of the universal qasida, the universal ode. What do our words know about us that we still ignore about them? Wave to us the poet Bonichard. With Temkin, we sounded a word and found the threaded letters that resemble the witnessed and the lived experience with our partners in flourishing. We are living the answer to questions that mirror each other and reflect in one another. How can our schools, organizations, societal systems, governance models, algorithms, societies become a reflection and an expression of our shared humanity? How can we talk about a silent transformation without being in the way of the silence? Temkin is a mirror polished by Husn. Husn invokes the beauty of the eye that beautifies. In the mirror of Temkin, we realize the beauty there is. 
in our communities, in our schools, in our systems, in our societies. The beauty we behold in us and in the world that beholds us in its magnificence. When we co-reflect in the mirror of Temkin, Temkin reflects itself. Temkin's root, the three-letter root verb, Makana, introduces itself as being the root of Temkin, the root and the derived self-reference in an elegant pirouette or oh, wise whirling. In that gesture, suffuses into meaning the words imken, potential, mumkin, possible, imkenia, possibility, meken, place, mekin, safe. A resonant lexical family that hums a tender melody of humanity, expressing itself in humanity. In the experience of the co-created meken mekin, the safe, love nurtured and love nurturing place, we express our potential to trust our humanity, reveal new future possibles, and widen the field of possibilities, manifest, manifesting the metamorphic transformation, a transformation beyond the shape that emanates from our imminent potential, humanity transcending into its humanity. The silent melody of this metamorphic transformation is heard when an inspector of the education system says, I realize that my light is so bright that I can only see it in a mirror. It is incumbent upon me to make sure I see the light of every student in every class so that they never forget the light they are. Or the minister of education asking, how do we institutionalize and evaluate an organic emerging process? How do we institutionalize Temkin without denaturing it? And witnessing the education ecosystem, living the answers, co-creating the conditions to live the answers. Or the evanescent, eternal moment, a nine-year-old boy who was struggling at school to the point of giving up, realized when his school and his community embraced each other as one, my school is life. The silent melody of the societal metamorphosis is felt when a young man who was asked so you're telling us that before Temkin there was violence in your neighborhood and today there is love? He answers, no, before there was love and today there is love. But before we did not express love with love. Let's pause here and listen from the deep ear of the soul, a sense of self resting in love, poetic futures singing in the present, the realization of the beauty there is. In Temkin, we realize that we are the gardeners and the garden, and together we are learning to speak the poesis of the and, the fecund between, where melos and logos are inseparable, silent melody hearing itself in the pulsating Mekin Mekin. In gratitude, I will turn to my beautiful friend and colleague Fatima, who will share our lived experience with our partners in co-flourishing in the Mekin Mekin in, in a few verses that resemble the essence, the substance, the sustenance, and the dance of Tamkin. <laughs> وتحكس بعضها البعض وتتجلى في الآخر مكان مكين المأوى الآمن والمحب الذي يرعى بالحب ويتغدى منه الرحم المشترك حيث تتفتح الحياة وظروفها وتزهر مع بعضها البعض مكان مكين المكان الذي يجد الجميع فيه مكانا كل فكرة وشعور ذو أهمية وحيث يسمع الصمت أيضا وندرك جمالنا في مرايا بعضنا البعض مكان مكين الهشاشة تعانق نفسها بلطف ونصبح معا أصدقاء للنشوز ونجد الشجاعة معا وندرك إمكان إنسانيتنا في بعضنا البعض مكان مكين الأسئلة تسأل عن نفسها والغير متوقع متوقع 
والإبداع يفاجئ نفسه والمفاجأة تتأمل نفسها بإعجاب مكان المكين حيث تقع اللغة المنطوقة في حب الحب والرحمة كما يظهر ذلك في فهمنا المتنامي والمدرك um, That's it from everybody in the panel. I'm going to let um, Madi introduce two of his good friends who are creating something beautiful at the back of the room. Thanks, Lor. Uh, during the whole event, like we had two amazing artists contributing to the beauty of this session with live um, artwork. Uh, if you allow me to introduce my two amazing friends, um, Mrs. Zainab Dia. She's uh, um, an amazing artist from Lebanon. Uh, she was trying to do something related to the theme of the event, like about poetry, about better futures. And I, 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 I wonder if she can turn it around, uh, Stephen, what do you think? <laughs> Maybe we, we need to see what's happening. W when you are ready, Zainab, no stress. Okay, you can continue working working on it probably later, but wow, that's really amazing. Can, can you bring it? Yeah. If you want to say anything about it, Zainab, then you have the microphone, just feel free. Donc, je me présente, je suis Zain Abdi, data scientist, artiste peintre. Euh, là, j'ai essayé de dessiner un tableau euh, qui présente la planète. Donc, euh, l'idée, c'est de voir euh, comment on peut protéger la planète par la connaissance, euh, l'étude. Euh, il fallait d'avoir plusieurs personnes ici, mais il, on n'a pas arrivé à leur créer. <rire> Voilà, donc euh, des, des gens qui, ont, euh, qui viennent de toute la planète, euh, euh, de toutes les euh, tranches d'âge et qui, euh, avec toutes leurs connaissances, avec euh, la réunion, euh, ils vont euh, sauver la planète. Voilà, c'est l'idée. Everyone is happy with that, but I think the most happiest here is uh, Dr. Francois Teddy, the, 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 the owner of the idea of Planetism University. And this, this uh, amazing artwork will go to you after it finishes. Thank you a lot, Zainab. Uh, and I want to thank my friend Mirella. She's an architect and she, uh, she helps me a little bit in my painting. Thank, thank you, you, Mirella. Mirella. <laughs> okay, merci. Uh, thank you, Zainab. Merci, Mahdi, aussi. Uh, <laughs> Also, in parallel to that amazing work, we have our great friend Yasser Al Garbi. He is very like he is very known for his calligraphy in the Arab world. Uh, originally from Syria, and he's now in France since two or three years. You can just correct me, Yasser. Uh, so Yasser takes uh, the words and creates art out of it, and that makes a lot of meaning. And this kind of art has been very like very very high in demand these days, everywhere. And he's known for his very amazing uh, masterpieces being painted all over the Arab world. So, uh, Yasser, thanks for coming from Troa, driving, I think, two or three hours. Three hours. Three hours. And you have the microphone. You can talk about anything you want. I don't like uh, microphones. You don't like microphones? No. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Everybody, uh, I'm not fluent enough as you wish in English, but I will try. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to be here uh, with you and uh, to participate uh, my passions. I have two passions, the art and the literature. A literature. Literature. I can translate for you. No, it's good. Savali. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm, I'm a lawyer. I didn't uh, learn uh, art, never, anywhere. But uh, it's a uh, passion for me. Uh, and the art, with literature, they made me. 
they made my head, my opinions. Always I thank uh, nature, I thank God, uh, whatever, that I, I uh, became an artist because I cannot imagine my life like a lawyer, lawyer, liar. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody and especially I want to thank my uh, dear friend, Mahdi, for this uh, opportunity, this night, such a great night uh, here. So what's the... Uh... It's your poem. <laughs> okay. That, that says, imagine that uh, ah, all clo the close your eyes a little bit that imagine like everyone is a poet and uh, like he selected it without consulting me and this, <laughs> is, this is not a promotion for anyone here <laughs> so thank you a lot and this is for also Learning Planet Institute and the yeah, festival it's a gift uh, ah. for uh, this yeah. uh, beautiful uh, place yeah thank you Yasser thank you a lot thank you thank you I think we have eight minutes in front of us. We have one question from the chat. Do we have any questions from the audience? You, you have a question. Up. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Abbas, and I'm from Lebanon, too. Um, just to give you a sense like, about myself, I, I'm someone who has zero background in literature or arts. Uh, but I'm curious to know one thing, which is uh, like, is writing poetry is like need a skill that you are inborn with it, or just you develop it by practice? So I'm just trying to know if I could find a poet some some place inside myself, like hidden inside my inside myself, then today. So, for instance, or Mandy, both of you, like anyone. I think you received two different answers. <laughs> yeah, ma I, maybe I share a profile like with Francois, Francois because currently I'm working like in corporate sector, so, uh, so I don't with know. With Vincent, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, I believe that everyone can become a poet, but not everyone can write a poem. Okay, this is uh, my point of view about it. And I think, although, although it's a skill, like a muscle that you have to work on, and this is something uh, uh, trivial, but poetry requires a lot of healing, a lot of imagination, a lot of willingness to spend a lot of time on something that you might not get. Like look, looking into the stars every night to see one shooting star that might not come. So this is a controversial thing. But um, yeah, like everyone can put this effort if willing on. But writing a poem requires a lot of skill on the language, on the uh, rhythms, on the verses. and but. My friend Vincent like does workshops on writing, writing poetry, and I w really want to hear like his point of view on that. Uh, I'm sorry, I was I didn't even hear the other question precisely. What was the question? Is can everybody be a poet? Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, yes, I believe so. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we're all basically all dust of stars, so we can all create a magical work of art. You know, the uh, art is not, you know, the definition of art is the basis of mankind. And there's no truth in it. It's just a reflection of your soul. It's just a manifestation of yourself to the world. There's no, it's not reserved to an elite genius. There's no price, no coherence, no criteria, no technique, no figures of speech in poetry either. There are, but it's not the point. The point is you can really just create a work of art based on who you are. Nobody has the same experience of life, knowledge of the world than you have. So you can create something that's very unique. And that's why, you know, since we're all unique, we all, all, all create something that's magic. And, you know, poetry also is, a, is very accessible also. It only takes words, a pen, and a paper to actually write it. You don't need to uh, have, uh, you know, a coup de crayon. You don't need to have a, uh, to know how to draw. You know, you can directly write a poem. And I, I give workshops in corporations, but also in prisons and with schools, uh, with kids that are maybe six or seven years old. It's just about freeing yourself to actually have the audacity to express yourself to the world, you know, just to uh, say, to reveal your dreams, to reveal who your true self is. It doesn't matter if you're going to write, write rhymes or metaphors, whatever. It's just about expressing your own truth. And that's what's poetic. You know, the same way that what is, you know, the 
poetics is going to be how you can live poetically your life, how you can see the good, the subtle, the kind, the invisible energy, you know, be in the world. And that's, you know, that's, a, yeah, that's, you know, Charlie Chaplin said that poetry is a love letter addressed to the world. And that's basically, it's good that, you know, in the quest of harmony than any poets. And in ancient Greek, you know, poesis means to create, to make. The, so the poet is not a, it's not a dreamer. It's actually a creator of new worlds and an, it's a change maker. And that's why I was saying earlier that poets were at the heart of the city. So, you know, it's basically everybody can be a poet. It's just about daring to be yourself, to try something new and to see what happens. And, you know, so... Please, by all means, become poets and make you know, a poem out of your life. So. Of course. Um, I know there are some questions on the chat, but we're being asked to wrap up um, the conversation in this event. There are a few other poets in the room, two of which have offered to share some of their poetry. So we're really happy to welcome them. I think there is... Amal Zayat, yeah, who is going to share some of her own poetry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where would you like me to stand? So. Wherever you're comfortable for you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. The camera where? <laughs> okay. So before I read any of my poetry, I would like to kick it off with a quote by one of my dear friends who is a uh, martyr and a hero of my own homeland. So Farah Omar once said, which translates to, life is not everlasting. Hold dear to your heart the ones that you love. And the reason I'm bringing her up today because she is one uh, the poem that I'm going to read today is actually a uh, tribute to her. And I'm going to read one that my sister likes so much, so I hope you like it too. So the poem is called Fairuz and Farah. The sweet sound of Fairuz singing, Ya Amar Mashgara, a cup of Zhurat, your photo held dear. I'll come and visit tomorrow, you promised. And yet, I find myself within the confines of November's 21st. Clocks digging in a relentless march of time, stagnant in its stride. Moments misplaced, 11 a.m. trapped in an endless loop, my existence tethered to it. Fairuz and the tranquil serenade of Ya Amar Mashgara. Tangerine whispers linger, your name in hidden prose. I'll call you again tomorrow, you pledged. And here I wait, impatiently longing for that ringtone in silence. The announcer on the TV spells familiar letters, and I can no longer breathe. My existence caught in a pause in the void. Fairuz echoes softly, the lunar ballad, and Amar Mashara. Farah Omar drifts through sunlit rooms, an unwritten promise. I'll return for you tomorrow. You vowed once more, but I stand alone, yearning, lost in a labyrinth where tomorrow remains a distant reverie. In the quiet, I hold on to that all that's left of you, my existence, Fairuz and Amar Mashara, a cup of surat, and your photo held dear. Thank you. And then following, we can have my wound on the stage if you still want to share. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Maywan. I am from Afghanistan, and this poem, in fact, written by one of my students. Unfortunately, she was banned by Taliban uh, because, of because of their decisions. And she asked me to share it in the, this event. However, I share the link. You can listen to her poem on her voice with subtitles. Uh, later, my friend, uh, Catherine, will share it. But I'm just sharing uh, her diploma or her words, OK? Hey, Afghan girl. They have interpreted you in the street like a disaster. They have developed you in silence and have broken you. Your love and dreams, the reflection of your voice, the pulse of your gaze, all distance from your wishes. You collapse in business favor. Here, Afghan girl, 
They have transplanted you from destiny, gamble you in modesty, offer you to the hunter of destiny. Nightfall, in the dark retreat, they cremated you in heart and fire. They wounded your body. Hey, Afghan girl, although your heart is broken and you become like a sunflower who expects who expect for a tiny ray. Even you have lost in the darkness, but you arise again with the courage and struggle for what is rightful you are. So it's sincerely to say, Hail to your metal. Your courage is beautiful. Your essence is honor. Thank you. And you can find the original version uh, or Catherine will share with you. And I have just a small poem of myself. In fact, for me, poetry was something different. Uh, I was semi-poet. And for me, I didn't know how I became poet because when I was in a deep pain when I was in difficult situation. The word, the letter just came out. At the end, I find my notebook. It was written by a couple of poems and stuff. I didn't even remember. But after the, the uh, political regime change, even I burned my, <laughs> that notebook. But again, now sometimes it's come. One of my another poem, which is not completed, and I'm working, it's I and you. I just pronounced two. Uh, a uh, part of it, it is like that. If you not become me, I not become you. There will, there, there will not be we. You become my body, I become your body. You become my soul, I become your soul. To not leave, uh, to not leave place for I and you. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you uh, for this opportunity to share our poems. Um, I like to, uh, my name is uh, Violaine Magna. I'm from Paris. And uh, I do some, I'm, I do like <laughs> so much poetry. And uh, I do some uh, corporate poetry too, as Vincent, that I know. And, um, and I'm pleased to share with you one of my poems. And the title is, this poem will be, will be in French. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, the title is uh, On My Planet. So in French, it's uh, Sur Ma Planet. And je ne suis pas un mégot jeté sur le pavé qui supplie le passant de ne pas l'écraser. Je ne suis pas une mythe coincée dans un placard dont on se débarrasse à coups de naphtaline. Non, messieurs, non, mesdames, non, ce n'est pas la peine d'en les dire ma planète. Non, messieurs, non, mesdames, ici, on me respecte. J'aime sentir la brise dans le creux des narines, les parterres humides de feuilles dans la forêt la verveine séchée et les copeaux de bois. J'aime sentir le vent glacer mes joues l'hiver, rafraîchir mon corps l'été dans les rivières, entendre l'eau de source descendre des montagnes et quand le soleil brûle, m'étendre sur la pierre à l'ombre d'un tilleul. J'aime, j'aime voir les coquelicots naître et disparaître, puis renaître à nouveau. J'aime regarder les lavandes s'étendre à perte de vue, parfois même jusqu'au ciel, sentir l'odeur du miel rien qu'au chant des abeilles. Si vous saviez, si vous saviez tout, tout ce que j'aime, ici, sur ma planète. Oui, mesdames, oui, messieurs, ici, sur ma planète, on n'ignore personne. On se voit, on se parle, on dit ce qu'on adore comme ce qui nous embête, on reconnaît nos torts, on s'excuse parfois, et tout cela va de soi. Oui, messieurs, oui, mesdames, ici on se respecte. Ici, sur ma planète, pas un être vivant ne s'excuse d'exister. 
Ici, ici, on se regarde, on se voit, on se parle. On lit sur nos fossettes notre goût pour la vie, nos victoires, nos défaites, nos espoirs, nos rires, nos fêtes. On lit sur nos fossettes tout ce qui nous unit. Bienvenue sur ma planète. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Stephen, do you want a, a few words to close the evening? Maybe with François? Yeah. Oh, then that would be a wonderful way to end the evening, I think, as a closure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, th thanks. Uh, I wasn't going to read a poem, but then I, I looked across the room and I saw my lovely niece who lives here in Paris, and uh, she resembles my daughter so much. I, I looked across and I thought, well, what's my daughter at least doing here? And it's, of course, her cousin um, who looks so much like her. Uh, welcome, Elia. Uh, and um, that thought and that connection sort of touched a, uh, a tender place in my heart. Um, when uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote a poem inspired by my daughter, the daughter that she, Elia looks so much like. Uh, this is called All the Days. No end of days storied in ice or flood or drought. Anxiety awoke too soon in our daughter, who asked us, what happens when all the days run out? How many four-year-olds think, much less fret, about finality? Not some abstract worldwide slaughter. No end of days storied in ice or flood or drought. Rather, the end of her own meandering route through time. What worm stirring in the mind brought her to ask what would happen when all her days ran out? She's not a metaphysical child, a mind without reins or borders, nor have our guiding tales taught her of an end of days storied in ice, flood, or drought. Her every prismatic sense absorbs light without venting colors. Nine years on, her eyes still water. Daddy, what happens when all the days run out? Those aren't her words now, but the dread and the doubt remain. Ticks, bridling rainbows, bracing our daughter. Not against the end storied in flood or drought, but the end nearer still when all the days run out. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is it still working? Yes. <laughs> I have troubles with mics <laughs> definitely today. Um, thank you everyone for coming. We're gonna end the session here. I hope you enjoy those two hours intense poetic um, moments uh, as much as we did, definitely. Mm -hmm.